Welcome back. In the last episode, we were able to defeat Cygnus, Princess Snow, and Hard Magnus. We're finally able to make 1 billion misos a week from weekly bossing and around 700 mil a week from Ursus. I was able to make significant gains to my stats and started working on our node stones. In this episode, we will be taking on Akechi and Chaos Papalatus. I hope that Apple is tasty as the gains we're about to make this episode. Let's get right into it. It's apple seed. I started off this week working on my inner ability. Unfortunately, I was unable to get something good and I honestly think I just have really bad luck when it comes to inner ability because I've been rolling this since I've made this character and I still haven't gotten anything good yet. I also continued my weekly bossing to make more misos. At this current time, I'm making around 1.8 billion misos a week, which is really good considering I've just been saving up and using it to upgrade my equipment. If you're wondering how I'm able to make almost 2 billion misos a week, that's because from weekly bossing, I'm able to make 1 billion misos and then doing Ursus daily for 7 days per week gives me around 800 mil. At this stage of progression, I'm really looking for this Kana ring as well as a black bean mark. Unfortunately, I'm still not able to get a Kana's ring, but that's okay. I was able to get this Tyrant Cloak from Hard Magnus, which I'm gonna be upgrading. Since this is technically a low funding bossing meal, I'm not going to get any of the Absolab gear and really focusing on a lot of the gear that I can get easily. This is why I really like the Tyrant's Cloak because it comes with 30 attack and magic attack right off the base. That's essentially like a 16 slash 17 star item that you're getting for free. And so all you really have to do is cube this item to get 6% stat. To continue my progression on this bossing meal, I decided to open up 151 node stones that I've been saving up for the last few months. Yes, that's right, last few months. I know that sounds like a lot of time, but honestly, I don't play MapleStory as much as you guys think, and so me collecting 151 node stones really just comes from doing daily missions, farming events, and all of that. So that's how I ended up saving 151 node stones. You can honestly get 151 node stones a lot easier if you actively play this game like every day. But me personally, I play this game maybe like three times a week. So I feel like me opening up 151 node stones is kind of a big deal. After opening up 151 node stones, this is what I was able to upgrade. As you can see, I'm primarily focusing on my perfect trio. That's because boost nodes are easier to get than skill nodes. I also continue doing my daily missions because I want to get to level 221. Normally, my Lotus and Damien bossing meals stay at level 220, but in this specific case, there was an event giving out a lot of EXP potions, and so I figured, might as well get to level 225. I took advantage of the growth potions, and I was able to hit level 225, which means I can now go to Arcana. That's another free 300 decks that I can get just from the Arcane symbol, which is going to help us out a lot for Lotus and Damien. I've already completed the Arcana prequest on my main character, and so I was able to skip it this time around. I'm taking this time now to upgrade my stats because I feel really confident in being able to defeat Akechi and Chaos Papalatus. I had 58 hyper stat points, and so I threw it all on Dex, which is the only stat that I have remaining that does not have any upgrades. After the upgrades, I almost have 10k Dex, which I feel very confident about, and I've decided now is the time to fight Akechi. Let's see how your skills compare to those of your ollies!
And just like that, we defeated Akechi. In my opinion, the difficulty of Akechi really depends on your class. Like, Akechi is a really fast-paced boss fight, and so if you're a class with a lot of mobility, a lot of movement, iframes, easy fight. The easiest way to beat Akechi is to stand next to him or behind him. The most important thing you're going to be looking out for when fighting Akechi is during the phase where he enters the state, all you have to do is just keep running and dodging. Like when I say run, I mean like run for your life because that's really the only way out of this. And so if you're playing a class like Wind Archer, Hayato, anyone that has insanely good movement, you're pretty much solid. And after we defeated Akechi, it's time to take on Chaos Popolatus. So one thing I like to mention about Chaos Papalatus is that this fight is really more about dodging the stuff that is on the map than actually dodging the hits Papalatus deals to you. In my opinion, the hardest thing to dodge about Papalatus' boss fight are the two lasers that spin around in the map. When these two lasers touch each other, you are one hit KO'd no matter what, unless you iframe it, but in this case, I didn't really have an iframe that dodges it, so... I kind of just had to take it out. So remember, when you're fighting Chaos Papalatus, you're not really looking at Chaos Papalatus, you're more focused on everything else that's happening on the map, because that is more deadly to you. If you're able to defeat Chaos Papalatus' first phase, then congratulations, you've officially beat Chaos Papalatus because his second phase is very easy, especially compared to his first phase. And just like that, we were able to defeat Chaos Papalatus. Honestly, I didn't think I would be able to defeat Chaos Papalatus. Like, I'm not even gonna lie. This is actually the lowest stat I've ever had while defeating Chaos Papalatus. Like, the fact that I have barely 10k stat and I defeated him. And honestly, I think, like, Wind Archer is just quite broken. So after hitting the next milestone of being able to defeat Akechi and Papalatus, I went back and continued doing my weekly bossing. Now, I was really hoping to get Akana's ring, but after like 5 weeks of doing this and I still haven't gotten Akana's ring, I've pretty much given up all hopes of getting one. And just when I thought my luck had run out, I got a Black Bean Mark. Which is awesome, because honestly, like, I was a little worried about taking on Lotus and Damien without the Akana's ring, but... The black bean mark honestly was a great step up. And after getting the black bean mark, I decided to upgrade it because I had a lot of miso saved up. I also have a lot of cubes saved up for my other bossing mules, so I decided to throw all of those cubes onto this black bean mark. I also decided to spend a little bit of misos buying the new bright cubes to try to upgrade this to legendary, which I ended up getting. I was able to achieve 15% off stat, so I kept that for now. And we were able to hit 11k decks with all of our new upgrades. This is what my equips currently look like. I'm running about 6% decks on most of my equips, with the exception of my weapon, secondary, and emblem, which I have much higher potentials for. Usually at around this time, I would have a Kana's ring and possibly one or two event rings. However, we haven't gotten an event ring from any of the events lately, and I was unable to get a Kana's ring, and so... I'm really just making use of everything that is available currently in the game. And that wraps up this episode. We were able to defeat Akechi and Chaos Papalatus. We were also lucky enough to get this Black Bean Mark, which we upgraded to Legendary and got 15% all stat on it. As we're nearing the end of this series, we are one step away from Lotus and Damien. It's been one hell of a ride, and so I just want to thank everyone, especially if you've been here from the beginning. And if you're new here, make sure you hit that subscribe button because you do not want to miss out on the grand finale. 
The next time we see each other, it will be a live commentary guide on how to defeat Lotus and Damien with 11k stat as a wind archer. Hope to see you there.